If you're like me, you like associating with criminal organizations in Romania, but who has the time? Fortunately, I'm here to help you in this episode where we're going to automate the criminal stuff, uh, which is uh, inspired by the name uh, of a popular Python book, Automate the Boring Stuff. Now, YouTube would really like for me to not show you how to do crimes, so I'm not going to show you how to do any specific crimes, but for those of you that are associated with criminal organizations and do like to commit crimes, this is going to show you how to commit those crimes better. Now, uh, I know that a lot of you have objections to Romanians, and that's not a sentiment I share. I greatly enjoy the company of the uh, Romanian people, but this is just an example. Like, it's a practical example. It's going to teach you three very important things that you're going to do a lot in programming, and it's just something that you can practice with, okay? Like, that's the key here is practice. Like, Giving yourself a little project to do is the difference between learning to code and not learning to code. Because it doesn't matter how many videos on YouTube you watch. If you're not programming, you're not learning how to program. So uh, that's like a big thing that a lot of people have uh, <clears throat> a hard time committing to and learning to uh, play any kind of musical instrument. It's just a matter of practicing. Like the only difference between somebody who can play and somebody who hasn't is the guy who can play has spent time practicing. So if you are... <laughs> Going to learn to program, once again, you have to make that commitment to program. Now, it can be spread out throughout your, your time. Like, you don't have to say that I'm going to spend all of my time, like, right now and this is going to be it. You can, like, spread it out throughout the month. Like, eight hours a month is, is probably a good goal to shoot for. That could be, like, a half an hour every day on the weekends and maybe four hours on every third Tuesday or whatever. Like, whatever works for your schedule, as long as you can find that time and commit to it, you're, you're golden. So, try to find the time. I'm going to show you how to do the things. So for this project, what we're going to do is take this RSS feed and bring it into our Python project and make it uh, more condensed and just useful to us. So this is a list of all of the latest Blu-ray releases, and we don't care about all of the latest Blu-ray releases. And we see we got all these movies with goofy looking formatting to their names and a whole bunch of other information we don't care about. What we do care about, though, is this freeloader tag that's on some of these movies. We are especially interested in these ones because when our Romanian friends want to talk to us about a movie, they keep track of that. And they expect us to then talk about that movie to other people. And they're keeping track of the ratio that they talk to us and we talk to other people. And it can sometimes be tricky to, to balance that out. But with these freeloader ones, the, the initial cost of them talking to us doesn't count against our ratio. So we can talk about the movie and we're, we're getting purely a positive ratio as a result of that. So this is great. We just want to get these freeloaders. So how, how do we do this? How do we get this whole big RSS and condense it to just the freeloaders? Well, it's, I've got the, the URL copied up and this will be in the uh, description of this video. So you can use this as well. Um, we're going to take that and put it into our program. So how do we do that? We got to establish a TCP IP connection over uh, well, HTTP over TCP IP, and then we got to do the DNS for the domain name that this is on and do all this other nonsense that we don't, we, we don't have to do any of that. Uh, we're doing Python, so we just type pip install requests, and requests does all that when we import requests. So that was easy. We're, we've now got a, the ability to reach out and, and connect to anything on the internet. We can do a request, we can do a post, we can do all kinds of different things with the internet easily. Uh, so let's do that to this RSS feed, which I am making the, the variable for this uh, capitalized, all capitalized. And that's because uh, this is a constant. And constants don't really matter uh, very much in Python, but if you're coming from any other programming language, you're used to this concept. Um, in Python, there's just a convention that you fully cap uh, any constant just to kind of make that clear, visually clear that that's a constant, but it doesn't really matter. So that's, that's our... Um, let me call this next one the downloaded RSS and for this we just do requests get and we give it that URL and we can see this uh, downloaded RSS and we've got this okay this is that XML file but it, it looks all ugly right now um and you notice it's got this B in front of it, which means it's a bytes object. Now, uh, most things in Python, if, if it's giving you a bytes object, it's usually got a text 
to let you get a pretty human readable thing. But since we're looking at this specifically for its data, we want it as a bytes object. Uh, so for our next trick, we're going to import this file that we've downloaded from the internet into a XML parser. And there are a lot of XML parsers on Python, but we're going to use LXML uh, because that happens to be a, a lot more Pythonic in its styling. Like some of these, it, when you're writing the code, it looks like JavaScript because of various conventions with, it's, it's a long discussion, but we're gonna use LX, LXML to keep things simple and Pythonic. And if, to install this one, I'm actually gonna use a PyCharms thing. Uh, you see requests and all those other things that came with requests, all of its dependencies, uh, which were installed by pip are showing up here. I can also use uh, the available packages thing within uh, PyCharm. And that pip thing that I used to grab that package, these are all of the packages that you can get off there. There's I don't know, hundreds of thousands, I don't know, there's a lot. But I can just search LXML and I get a whole bunch of different options. I just want this base one. And I install the package and it's doing its thing. And now that package has been installed successfully. So now I can from LXML, because I don't want to import the whole thing, I just want to import a sub module of this package from LXML import e tree. And this is going to be our uh, reader because the, the, the name comes from the fact that the XML file looks like a tree. It's got this like main trunk and then branches and branches. So we want to import this as our RSS and we will do an E tree from string and we give it our downloaded RSS and we give it the content because we want it as a bytes object. So now if we print RSS, it's going to show us what it's imported. And it's imported an element called RSS at this memory location. We don't have to worry about the memory location. This is just a visual let you know that it's doing a thing. It did the thing. So now it's got the RSS, which is the root of this. Uh, the This is just a declaration to make it clear that this is an XML file. But this is where the meat is. It's got that. So now we want to get deeper. We want to get into this channel, which has all of the actual details. So to do that, we can find channel. And now we've got a channel element. Now, there's another way to do this. We can um, iterate through this thing and see what's inside of it. Because if we look at it, it's got a length. There are 31 things inside of this channel. And we can iterate through this to, to see exactly what those things are if we don't know already. Like if we don't have the uh, XML to easily read, uh, we could iterate through this. So let me explain iteration and lists and arrays here in Python. It's super easy. Uh, arrays are called lists in Python. I'm sure there's a reason for it. I never learned it, so you're probably not gonna learn it from me. But uh, that's, that's an array right there. I just, it's complaining because I didn't put spaces between the, the commas there. Uh, and I forgot four, there we go. So I've got an array of these five elements. And if I wanna call a specific element, I would say print my array, um, I'll do one. And if you're expecting it to say one, you're thinking logically and programming always counts from zero. So instead of giving me one here, it's gonna give me two because zero is one in this case. and three is four. It, you know, let me change all this because this is confusing. <laughs> One blah, uh, 11. No, I, I should not use words. Uh, foo bar. Okay. So zero is now one. And when I do my array three, it's going to give bar because zero, one, two, three is bar there. So let's see what we get. One and bar, exactly as we expected. So another thing we can do, instead of explicitly stating I want to get to this one, we can go through every single one of these 
by doing a for loop. So we just do for and then whatever, just uh, this is a temporary variable name, so it can be literally whatever you want in my array. We can now print whatever this is. And you'll notice in a lot of programming languages, they want to put curly brackets all over the place to indicate when you're starting a sub process. And in Python, we're not doing any curly brackets like that at all. Okay, so we're just saying colon, that's the end of my declaration of my for loop. And then here is a tab, or just tab in. And that's indicating that this is some sub thing to whatever the declaration above it is. Uh, we will do the same exact sort of process for making functions, for making classes, for you know everything that we're going to be working with. This tab indent is what's indicating that this belongs to that. So when we do a print uh, whatever, it's going to list every single object inside of that list. So we can do the same thing now and get rid of that by looking at everything that's inside of this channel. And now we've got a whole bunch of different elements. We've got all 31 of these elements now listed out as title, description, language, and docs, and stuff like that. So we don't care about the title and all this other stuff. We just want all of these items. So when we went down from the RSS root to channel, we did a find to get to one thing. It gives a find uh, uh, method here will give you the first thing it finds. But we want it to find all of the items. So we'll tell it find all items and I'll add that up here so we can get a count whoops I've screwed up something oh item not items now we've got just the items and we've got 25 of them and from here we can say uh, let's Let's look at the item now to see. We've got a title, a link, a pub date, description. Let's just look at the title. And we do that by simply doing find title. And then we want the text of this. And now we've got all of the movie titles. So I keep using print as an example because print is the example. It is the ultimate example that if you can print, then that means you can do anything else you want with it. And we want to do some other things with this, such as if freeloader is in this whatever find title text, then print it out. All right, now we got just our freeloaders. Now we could take that and, and build a whole new RSS, but we don't need to do that. We can just knock out all of the non freeloaders. So we do up here, we say else and colon, and now we're giving it a different instruction. If it doesn't say freeloader in it, we're going to do something else to it. And in this case, we're going to um, get parent, which is an instruction to go from this item back up to channel. And from there, we can say remove this specific item. In fact, let me change whatever here to item so that it's a little clearer. See, it's this can be literally anything. So we're going to remove the item using the item to find its parent and then removing it from that parent. And let's then print how many items are in here when we're finished doing that. So we go down from 25 down to nine and we've only got the freeloaders in this. So that right there is pretty impressive, right? But we can now save this into its own file. And there are a couple of ways to do this. The correct way to do this though is with a with statement because opening files and it requires you to then remember to close the file. And if anything went wrong in between those two processes, the instruction to close the file might not happen. And then the file gets uh, kind of locked in an open state. And there are a lot of other things. Well, not a lot, but there are other 
areas in programming where it's important to make sure that you close whatever you're doing under all circumstances. Like if it crashes, if it doesn't, you want to make sure that that is closed in itself. So the way that we do that in Python is with a with statement where we say with open, and here I just declare open a file, uh, my new RSS XML, and I'm going to tell it that I'm opening it in the write mode and it's going to be writing in bytes. And I'm going to say that as is just a, me giving it a local variable name as uh, my new file, my new file, write. And here we do the, the reverse of what we did up here. So we now do, we use the eTree package to send this to a string and we give it our RSS. And um, I'm just going to make it pretty and so I'll tell it pretty print is true and uh, XML declaration is also true. And let's see what we get. So we got a new file that just showed up. And the, the pretty thing is the reason that this is all indented nicely and it's human readable. And the declaration is this up here. But the, the important thing is we now have an RSS that is only showing us the freeloaders. So if you are of a criminal intent, you know where to stick this RSS now <laughs> to only get these freeloaders. But um, we can do a lot more with this now. Like I don't want to throw too much at you in one video and I'm sure this is already going pr plenty long enough. But in the next video, we're going to get really, really creative with how we're uh, deciding which movies will be included in our new specialized RSS. Until then, like seriously practice and, and get into this, all right? Take it easy, folks.